In this video for AP microeconomics students, we're looking at the consumer and producer surplus when it comes to a price floor and a price ceiling. So just to remind you of some vocabulary, a, a uh, price ceiling is the highest price allowed by the law and a price floor is the lowest price allowed by the law. Okay, so also consumer surplus is the difference between what you're willing to pay and what you had to pay. So let's say you go to the store willing to pay uh, $10 for something, but you get to the store and the product is only $7. Well, good for you. You're going to save your $3, right? There's three extra dollars you're willing to spend that you didn't have to spend. So that's consumer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between what a business was willing to sell you a product for and what they and the going market price and what they got to sell you the product for. So let's say that a business is willing to sell you something for $3, but supply and demand determines the price is seven. Well, good for them. They get to sell it for four extra dollars. So take a look at this graph here. You have a price floor. Now remember, price floors are set above the equilibrium. It's the lowest price allowed, so they can't get back down to the equilibrium price. So supply and demand determines a price is 10, and there's 50 being bought and sold. The government comes in and says, that's not fair to the producer apparently, and they raise the price to 14, saying you can't go below $14. That's why price floors are set above, so that they can't get back to the equilibrium. So now we put two dots where it hits the demand curve, you get quantity demanded. Where it hits the supply curve, you get quantity supplied. But where is this market really gonna operate? It's really gonna operate here. Um, consumers wanna buy 40. Yes, the producers want to supply 60, so we have a uh, surplus of 20 units. Um, but really this market is operating here where there's 40 being bought by the consumers at a price of $14 each with this price floor. So where is the consumer surplus? Well, you find consumer surplus but below the demand curve but above the price. Below demand but above the price is your consumer surplus. So here it would be this area right here that I'm lining in. There is your consumer surplus. Producer surplus is above the supply curve, but below the price, but you have to stay within the quantity. Remember, there's 40 being demanded by the consumer, so we want to stay, um, we want to stay within that quantity. So above the supply curve, but below the new price, which is $14, so I'm going to line this area in in blue here. All this area here is your area of producer surplus. Now, nobody got this area here, the 40 to 50 units, the 10 units that were lost. No one got those units here. So I'm area that I'm shading in here in gray is your area of called deadweight loss. Deadweight loss is the loss of consumer and producer surplus. It's like the area of market failure because of this price floor. Okay, so here's what your consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss would look like with a price floor. Let's look at a price ceiling. A price ceiling is the highest price allowed by the law. So here in this graph, supply and demand determined a price of $10. The government said that's not fair. You can't charge more than seven. That's why price ceiling is down below, saying you can't get back up to the equilibrium price of 10. So this is supposed to help the consumers by artificially lowering the, lowering the price. It really doesn't help very much, if at all, in, in, in many cases. Um, so put a dot where it hits the supply curve. You have 40 that's being supplied. Where it hits the demand curve, you have 60 that's being demanded. So there's going to be more demand than supply that's called a shortage. So you have a shortage, in this case, of 20 units. So to find the consumer and the producer surplus, first we have to ask ourselves, where is this market going to operate? It's going to operate right here. And it's going to operate there because this is how much is being supplied. Yes, the consumers want to buy more, but we know that 40 are going to be bought. In this case, in this scenario, it's kind of irrelevant that the consumers want to buy 60. There's 40 that are being supplied and, and um, yes, the consumers want to buy more and therefore it's a shortage but really the market's going to operate here because there's 40 being supplied. Um, now, 
Consumer surplus, again, is the area below the demand curve but above the price. Now, we have to stay within the quantity, though. And the quantity now with the price ceiling is going to be 40. So I'm going to trace up. I'm going to trace up just to, so that we can see where the 40 units are at so that we can stay within the quantity. So below demand but above the price. Uh, so here's the demand curve and stay within the quantity. So all this area here is below the demand curve but above the price of $7 and I had to stay within the quantity of 40 units. So I have that. Now the producer surplus above the supply curve but below the price and stay within the 40 units. So that's just going to be this small area here. Now nobody got these other 10 units. There used to be 50 bought and sold, now there's only 40, so there is a deadweight loss. And the deadweight loss is all of this area here, this triangle. That's the loss of the original producer and consumer surplus. It's like the area of market failure. So here is your deadweight loss. Again, the brown area below demand, but above the $7 price was our consumer surplus. Above the supply curve, but below the $7 price ceiling, there is our producer surplus.